Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're solving Leap Code 129, some root to leaf numbers. Just want to do a quick disclaimer, this is not the Morris tree solution because that thing is just absolute bullshit. This is just your standard DFS solution for people um, a bit more new to these kind of traversals. We don't do Morris tree here. You are given the root of a binary tree containing the digits from 0 to 9 only. Each root to leaf path in the tree represents a number. For example, the root to leaf path 1, 2, 3 represents 123. Return the total sum of all root to leaf numbers. Test cases are generated so that the answer will fit into a 32-bit integer. A leaf node is a node with no children. So we're given this example here, 1, 2, 3, and we're asked to find the output. So it's going to be 25. Let's see how they got that. Well, the path from 1 to 2, this can be represented as 12, and then the path 1, 3 is represented as um, 1, 3. And that is 13, so 12 plus 13, obviously we get 25. Now let's look at another example where we have this more complicated tree, and we basically have what are all the sum of the paths. So we have 4 to 9 to 5, 4 to 9 to 1, and then 4, 0. So those numbers would be 4, 9, 5, plus 4, 9, 1, so 4, 9, 1, plus 40. So when we sum all of those up, we get 10, 26, which is our solution here. So, you know, just looking at the problem, it's relatively easy to figure out uh, what you need to do. But, you know, with code, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's you know, really not that bad. So how do we want to approach this? Well, you saw that we started at the root node and we were pre proceeding down the tree until we got to the leaf right and every time we can think of it as kind of multiplying the previous step by 10 right because if we just added 4 plus 9 plus 5 you know that wouldn't actually give us 495 this uh, 4 needs to be multiplied based on how many times we've basically seen uh, basically how many steps we've done otherwise we're just going to add the numbers and we're not going to get it right this has to be 400 this has to be 90 and this has to be just 5 in this case it's 40 plus 0 so it depends on how many kind of steps we've done and we can think about that but basically every time we go down a level in the tree whatever the current sum is that we have so far we just need to multiply it by 10 and then we're good to go so what we'll do is we'll basically just do a simple dfs traversal start from the root always go down to the child node multiply the previous value by 10 and then add the current value so let's look like what that would look like for just this side of the tree just so we don't have to do the whole thing so obviously we start at the root our current sum is four then we get to the nine so if we were to sum this obviously it's not four plus nine which is 13 it should be 49 right so we do four and remember we multiply whatever the previous sum was by 10 so we multiply by 10 we get 40 and then we add the current value which is 49 right then we get to the five and remember that before we add the five we need to multiply the previous step by 10 so 49 times 10 is going to equal to 490 then we add the 5 and we get 495 doing the same algorithm for this side will of course give you 491 and then doing it here will give you just 40 uh, which is what we summed up earlier and basically how we get our final solution okay so that's generally how we want to approach it doing it in the code is pretty simple just a pretty standard um, depth for search going to start at the root go until we hit um, a leaf node and then add that to some sort of final result uh, which will return at the end so without further ado let's actually go to the code editor and type this one up it's relatively straightforward Okay, as promised, let's type this up. First thing we need to do is actually check whether or not we've been given a valid root. Obviously, if the root is null, there's nothing for us to sum. We can simply just return zero. So we can say, if not root, uh, we can just return zero. Okay, now what we want to do is define a variable which is going to store our total sum, which we need to result, uh, return at the end. So we're going to say self.res, and this is going to be equal to zero. And then we're going to call our DFS function, and we'll define this in a second. And we're going to call it on the root, and the current sum is actually zero because we haven't actually summed anything yet. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to just return self.res at the end. Okay, so that's the main function. Let's now define our helper DFS function to actually do the processing for us. So we're going to say def DFS 
and oops, we're going to pass in self, we're going to pass in the node that we're currently processing, and the sum that we've seen so far. So obviously, when you're traversing this tree, you're going to be going into the left subtree and the right subtree. If you actually go, uh, you're, at a, you're, at, you're at a leaf node, and you go to the left or to the right, you're going to get an empty node. Uh, or it could just be the case that, um, you know, there's no right subtree, there's no left subtree. So in this case, you just want to return uh, nothing here. So we're going to say if not node, we're just going to return so we can break the DFS in this case. Okay, now what we want to do is remember that when we get to um, a stage, what we want to do is we want to multiply the previous sum by 10 and then add the current uh, value of the node that we're at. So we're going to say that the new current sum is going to equal to the old current sum times 10 and then we're going to add in uh, the current nodes value. So that's going to give us the current sum. Now what we need to do is we need to basically say, okay, if we're at a leaf node, then that means that we're done. And we can actually add that final value, which is stored in our current sum to our result. So we actually need to check whether or not we've hit a leaf node. Now the way that we know that we're at a leaf node is leaf nodes have no left child and have no right child. So we're going to say if not, uh, node.left and not node.right, then we know that we're at a leaf node. And we can say self.res plus equals to what our current sum. And then we can think of our DFS for at least this path from the root to the leaves as done. So we can simply return and start bubbling up our DFS recursion uh, back up to the root. Now what we want to do is obviously we want to continue um, into the left subtree and into the right subtree. So we're going to say whoops, self.dfs and we're going to pass in node.left because we want to explore the, the left subtree and we want to pass in uh, current sum because we want to this is our current sum. So we're going to say self, hey, cannot type today. And we're going to pass in the right subtree as well, and the current sum. And that's really all you need to do. Um, let's all run it, make sure we didn't make any silly bugs, submit it, and we are accepted. Cool, cool, cool. All right, what is the time and space complexity here? So obviously, as with basically any DFS, we have to traverse the entire tree and we're going to touch every node once. Uh, for that reason, the time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is, of course, the number of nodes in the tree. Uh, for the space complexity, it's also going to be big O of n, where n uh, is the number of nodes in the tree. And the reason that it's n is because it can actually be the height of the tree. If we think about a binary tree, which is completely skewed to one side, so think only left subtrees or only right subtrees, you're basically going to have to maintain this DFS stack. Um, the recursive stack is going to hold basically all of the um, nodes in it as you go down to the very bottom. You know, in one of the examples, we had left and right subtrees, so it's not actually going to be that tall of a tree. But when you have um, all left or right trees, then you're going to have a very tall skewed tree. So this is why in the worst case, it's big O of n. So that's how you solve this problem. Like I said, this is one of those kind of introductory problems to DFS gets you familiar with the algorithm. This is a pattern that you're going to see over and over again in leak code. So it's really good to know how to do this and do it quickly. Um, just anytime you see this problem, you like this know how to do it. Obviously, the Morris tree is just beyond insanity. That is just absolute bullshit. If you see that in an interview, just just hang up. Um, if anyone expects you to know Morris tree, then yeah, I don't even know what to say. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.